I believe you are going to enjoy this business success training. These are some of my mentors taking us down the road to business success. And introduce you to some of the best mentors that I've personally met and worked with. Uh, and many of them, they're just good at what they do. And I just needed them on this journey with us because you can hear it from me, you can hear it from Megan, but when you get an entire panel of experts, uh, your, in, your chance of success, I feel like, is going to be way more. So speaking of which, I have to say a mandatory income disclaimer. So let me just get that out of the way um, because you guys are going to hear some amazing stories today. Some of them are going to sound unbelievable. Uh, they're not unbelievable, if you can believe it. But uh, <coughs> mandatory earnings disclosure. There's no guarantees regarding the income from the MDC or HempWorks opportunity. The success or failure of each affiliate, like in any other business, depends upon each affiliate's skill set and personal effort. Earning levels for independent affiliates are examples and should not be construed as typical or average. Income level achievements are dependent upon the individual affiliate's business skills, personal ambition, time, commitment, activity, and demographic factors. All right, so we got that out of the way, thankfully. So, welcome to class, you guys. We have been waiting for this for at least a couple weeks. Um, it's been a while since I've really put a mentorship group together. I started with the hustle group a few months ago and um, Megan was actually one of the very first people that kind of joined me on that venture and it was a wild year. But as many of you guys know, I'm a mom. So I took the summer off to spend with my kids because you know, while it is important to mentor grown adults, it's important to mentor your own children too. So I spent some time with them and uh, we had an amazing summer, but I am so excited to be back in the saddle with you guys and leading up until convention. Literally, I have this entire plan uh, of amazing information to share with you guys. So this week is gonna be the chill week. We're starting in the middle of the week on a Wednesday. I know that's kind of rebellious, not starting on a Monday. Um, but it's gonna be kind of a chill week because it's all about you. What's the story that you're telling? Um, how are you describing your life when other people ask you what you're all about? Uh, I remember for myself early on, <laughs> especially in my network marketing career, I, I, I focused on my past story, my, where I came from, and I could never visualize where I was going because I was so stuck in my current situation. And storytelling is an, an important factor in network marketing because at least for me, I tell people I don't sell anything, I just share. I share my story, I share my, the story of my products, what it's done for me, my business, what it's done for me, and all that good stuff. So this week is our introduction to the class, and also we're gonna share our stories with you guys, and also we're gonna touch on how to set intentions, how to set your goals so that they actually come true. Because how many of us have bought planners like these before, wrote down your goals, and then Nothing ever happened after that. I can't tell you how many of these, like even on this table, multiple journals and books, and I'm like, maybe if I get a new one, then I'll stick to my goals, I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna talk about how to actually stick to those intentions, how to actually set up yourself for success. And then we're gonna transition a little bit into what is money? What is our relationship with money? Money is energy, right? So we're gonna talk about that. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, and we're going to introduce a little bit of the law of attraction, but we're going to get into that a little later on down in the course. And then lastly, we're going to talk about vision boards. This is like my favorite part of network marketing is you get to be a kid again. You get to make a like a Christmas list again um, for the things that you want to achieve and see in your life. So we're going to talk about vision boards and other ways to remind yourself and to get yourself back on track uh, when you are going through this. Uh, process of succeeding and just transforming your life altogether. So again, thank you guys for hopping on. Some of you guys are joining us from around the world in random time zones, and even the three of us all have a different time zone. Um, so thank you guys for hopping on. And without further ado, I'd just like to say uh, welcome Megan Chudark. <laughs> She's our 100K affiliate, although her team did almost 400,000 in sales last month. Insane. Um, welcome to the show. And then also Amy, which I got to briefly kind of meet and greet with you yesterday, which was awesome. I love when I meet somebody new that you just know right away, like they have good vibes. I'm in. 
Um, so it's good to meet you as well. She's a 50K affiliate and she's gonna bring in some wisdom coming from the corporate America kind of background and uh, we'll let her tell her story on that. So let me give you guys my quick background in case you don't know who I am. And this is like so random on your Facebook and you're like, who's this girl when she's talking about? I'm Jenna Zweigel and I am notoriously the wife of Josh Zweigel, who's the CEO of the company. Um, but I'm the co-founder of Hempworks of that brand product line. And also I am a super affiliate in my daily choice, which is kind of weird, I know. So we're gonna talk about how, how come you have three different titles, what's going on with that? So <laughs> my quick background, I should say, um, you guys, you know, everybody has a life plan. Uh, we're told to get good grades, go to school, do all this stuff, you know, then get married after college, don't, not in before that, you know, okay. So then we go to school, we get our job, and then we retire 50 years later. I did that backwards. So my quick story is I got married when I was 18 years old to a guy in my English class, and uh, he took off for the Marines. I got pregnant. Um, three months pregnant when he left and I gave birth to my first son at 19 years old by myself while he was deployed and that was my introduction into adulthood so that's kind of where I started from just to show you guys a little bit of my background how I was thrown into kind of like survival you know sink or swim that was my quick beginning but I also kind of dabbled with network marketing because I always had in the back of my mind there has to be another way <laughs> like this can't be it like I don't want to have to be stuck in the military every single day and there's nothing wrong with the military I served my time and it was an amazing experience there has to be another way than to clock in clock in every day and listen to somebody else's orders for your life um, and I tried network marketing when I was 18 I remember my first Amway meeting that was really entertaining I learned all about the circles and the little pyramid on the whiteboard and the Ray Kroc story. Um, very standard network marketing introduction for me. And I remember thinking, like, I'm ruined. Like, now that I know there's another way to make all this money, I'm not going to be happy in any job now from that one. Like, for sure. <laughs> like, now that I know there's another way. So for me, I kind of dabbled in and out of the industry for about 10 years. And I would have some success, and then I would, like, not have any success. And I tried every company that you can probably think of in those 10 years, just because it was like, well, maybe it's the product, maybe it's the cop plan, maybe it's the leadership, maybe it's my upline, maybe it's whatever. And I had every excuse in the book on why I couldn't succeed until I met Josh. So in 2014, I, um, I met Josh in Baltimore, <laughs> random as that is, and I was just getting out of the military and I ended up living there. Met Josh for, well, it was supposed to be for coffee. Those of you who know our story, we were supposed to meet for coffee. He calls me on the way there and he goes, yeah, I actually, I don't drink coffee, but I'll meet you for dinner. And I'm thinking, okay, here we go. Like, <laughs> so now we're going to dinner. And I met him for dinner and I remember walk, watching him walk through the door and I'm thinking to myself, that's it. Like, I love him. I don't know why. I just, and he's not particularly like super sexy, like at the time, you know, I'm like, there's no like real reason for this other than I just felt like a connection. And at this point in my life, I was just like, listen, I'm out of the network marketing industry. Whatever this man has to say, do not join him in anything. Like I just was done with network marketing. Um, after a few years of trying, I got burnt out. I was discouraged. I was like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe this is a rigged system. Maybe it's not an equal opportunity for everybody to succeed. Maybe I, I felt like I saw behind the curtains and I realized that maybe it wasn't a possibility for everybody to succeed. So it wasn't until I met Josh and I remember that meeting specifically because I said, okay, I have a following on Facebook. I started a YouTube channel. So maybe I can sell some tools or marketing systems for the industry. You know, I can sell something to my people. So why not? And he goes, it's funny that you should say that because I'm going to launch my own company in November and I would like you to join in as like an affiliate and help grow sales. And I'm like, really? I just said I'm leaving. And he's like, just give it one more shot. Don't quit on the industry just yet. He said, because I've had success in the industry. I know a different way 
to build. I know a different way to make relationships and, and to do this thing. And he had previous success in his prior company. And I said, all right, I'll join you. If, if you do it differently, if you do this company differently, you have to, you know, be good to people. Make sure we have a good pay plan. That's fair to everybody. Make sure we give people good products and, and good service. Like I want to be the, the, the bridge between, you know, both sides of that, that corporate and affiliate. I want to be able to make sure people have the chance to succeed here. And he said, I'm all in with that. And the reason I'm starting MDC is because I got burnt before in another company and I want to be the difference. And I said, all right, if we do that, then I'm in. So fast forward to the start of my daily choice. You guys, I came in as an affiliate did 49,000 in sales. My first four weeks in the business, I hit 25 K affiliate. I didn't even know that I was that close to 50 K at the time. Otherwise I could have just pushed a little harder on the last few days, but, um, I hit the top of the leaderboard. I started kind of growing my team organically, but it really wasn't until we introduced HempWorks into the picture in 2017. And around the same time MDC was started, you guys, I got really sick. My hair was falling out. Like I had massive like acne everywhere. And I'm just like, my health is just deteriorating. And of course, I'm not going to say any disease names or anything like that because we're not allowed to do that. So I'm just going to just let you guys know I was very sick. And it wasn't until Josh and I decided to move to Las Vegas together as a couple in 2016 when I started experimenting with medical marijuana. And you guys, I was against this because my brother had gotten in trouble with it in California. And I was like, not gonna, I'm not that kind of person. I don't smoke. I don't whatever. And um, which is funny because those of you who know me now you know, completely turn around on that whole deal. But um I, I tried CBD oil for the first time in 2016 and um, it didn't do anything. So I didn't keep taking it. It was like, all right. Uh, it wasn't until 2017 when we really partnered with the farm in Kentucky. We got a really, really good quality of oil that my life started to change. And I said, Josh, if you don't launch this, then I'm going to launch it without you because this is just that good. And he's like, all right, well, set up a website and see what we can do. And it wasn't long before we merged HempWorks and My Daily Choice together. And at that point, it was like, okay, I guess that makes me a founder. So I was not ready to not be an affiliate, though. My heart was still with the affiliates. I still was working with everybody. And I, I didn't want to disappear, even though that's what I did for summer. But you know what I'm saying. So long story short, you guys, my story was that I came in with determination to succeed from the beginning. And I was afraid of the industry at first. I had some of the same preconceived ideas that maybe some of you guys have as well, but I opened my mind and I allowed myself to learn a new way of doing business. And when I partnered with Megan and some of these people early on, all we did is just say, all right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna change our mindset about a lot of this stuff. We're gonna give it a shot and we're gonna run for a year. We're gonna do a, a hard run on, on these products on this opportunity and we're going to make it work. So that's my quick story. And I don't want to take any more of that time there because I want to hear Megan's story and I want to hear Amy's story. And then we're going to transition into how to tell your story. How, what, what are the main things that we should talk about? What, you know, in network marketing, how do you start telling your story? And also then we'll start talking about goals and intentions and all that good stuff. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you guys to Miss Megan Shudark, 100K affiliate in My Daily Choice. And we would love to hear from you, Megan, and just know what your background is, your story. Why did you decide to come on board with us? Why did you partner with me back then? And where are you at today? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on today. I um, I have quite the story. Um, I kind of call it a rags to riches story because it's a, a real rags to riches story. Um, we, I uh, was, I was a teen mom. Um, I had my first child at nineteen. And so I also learned how to be an adult really, really quick. Um, 
I was all prepped up and geared to go to college the way you're supposed to uh, go to college, then get married, then have babies. And my life kind of just went in a different direction. I had my first child when I was 19. And then I had my second child very short after um, at 21. So I fit, I was starting to fit the statistic of a teen mom, you know, having another kid within two years. Uh, living on government assistance and um, in poverty basically is really the statistic for a teen mom. And I was heading in that direction. Um, and about a almost a, a little more than a year ago, um, uh, I well, I've been married for about five years. So I should start there. <laughs> I've been married for um, about five years. We've been together for about nine years. And um, my husband was diagnosed uh, pretty sick. Uh, no disease names, but he was he was diagnosed pretty sick um, about two and a half years ago, and our whole world uh, changed rapidly. Uh, I wasn't able to work the normal, uh, you know, what they say the normal job is. I wasn't able to leave the house because his, you know, his his conditions. I just couldn't. Um, so I was looking for other things. I've been in network marketing for eight and a half years, and I never really found success. I had been through the different companies, so many companies, I, I can't even remember some of them. Um, and that was really the, just the, the cycle. It was like, find a company, change a company, find a different company. And it was just a vicious cycle. I could never find anything, a company that had everything I wanted, the, you know, the products, the, the money, the leadership and everything until I found him ports. Um, I had been following or stalking Jenna, you could say, for uh, probably a year and a half before she started, uh, before she founded Hemports. And I had been following her and I was just really drawn to her because the, the way she presented herself. And so I had followed her. I was watching every, every little thing she did. I was watching her. And so when I saw her launch Hemports with my husband being sick, I wanted to try it. We didn't have a whole lot of money. Um, so we were actually, uh, Jenna sent us one because um, we didn't have a lot of money. And so when he started that and I could see the change, I knew that I had to get involved. Um, again, we didn't have a lot of money. We were living off of disability, which uh, for a family of four, it's like $1,100 a month, a month for four people to live on. And that's supposed to pay all your bills, your, 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 all your rent, your, all your bills, your food, everything. And, uh, obviously that did not come anywhere close to covering our expenses. Um, so we were, uh, you know, we were on food stamps. We were on government assistance. We actually lived in a run down trailer, um, and when I say run down, I mean, we had holes in the ceiling. When it rained, we had pots and pans to catch the water. Um, we had to use duct tape to duct tape the doors shut every night because it wouldn't lock and latch. Um, we didn't live in like a dangerous neighborhood, so it wasn't like a safety issue, but um, we did, couldn't lock our door. And um, we only had one burner that worked on our stove. And we lit, you know, we went to food pantries to get food because we had food stamps, but it just didn't cut it for a family of four. I have two growing boys that eat like crazy and that just didn't cut it. And so we used our last hundred dollars. She came to me and she had like a one sentence pitch and it was, you know, Hey, I'm launching this company. Uh, I want to, you know, are you, are you in or out? And that was it. You know, I didn't know anything about the compensation plan. Um, I knew what the products were, but I didn't know anything about the company, anything about the, uh, you know, how we were going to do it or anything. All I knew was I believed in her and I saw that she had this, uh, just this energy and this vibe. And I knew that I wanted to be like her. And so I was like, okay, let's do it. Uh, my husband was actually asleep when I signed up. I'm like, I'll just tell him in the morning. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to sign up. Um, so it was our last hundred dollars we signed up. And as soon as I did it, I started in with the mindset of, oh my gosh, that was our last hundred dollars. I hope this works. How am I going to do this? Um, we didn't have 
I mean, the, we weren't in the great situation. So we didn't have like a computer. We didn't have uh, internet. We had phones, but we didn't have phone service. So um, you can basically still use the phone just with Wi-Fi. And the closest internet was um, at the McDonald's. It was a mile away. We didn't have a car. So um, I pretty much had to walk to McDonald's for the first month of this business to make it happen. Um, I knew that, you know, and I live in Texas, y'all, and we started in May 2017. It's hot. <laughs> so I would, um, my kids were still in school, so I'd get them off to school, make sure my husband was like taken care of, and then I would start on my journey and walk. And um, I would stay there all day and um, use the Wi-Fi and I would start making connections. I was doing everything that I possibly could to get in contact with people. I just know that I had to make it work. And so um, I did that every day for about a month and we, um, and we launched, you know, I, we, I didn't, I didn't, but Jenna did. She launched Hemp Works. Um, it started May 15th. And so from May 15th to the end of May, I hustled my rear off. I was up. I did not sleep. I maybe had two hours of sleep because I knew what it would take. If, um, if every, if she was up, I was up. Um, so I was up very, very late. I woke up very early in the morning. I had no sleep during the day and, um, I hit 5k from May 15th to May 30th, 30th or 31st in 15, 16 days. Um, I hit 5k and I kind of started relaxing and knowing, okay, well maybe this is going to work. Uh, we made our investment back within the first week. So I didn't really have anything invested in it anymore. Um, so I was kind of starting to get relieved and the, I think the thing that, you know, really changed the way we were living and really changed our lifestyle was my mindset. Um, I started believing in myself. I started believing that this can happen. It's not, you know, these stories of, I used to hear all the stories of these top leaders and these top producers. And I thought they were all myths. I was like, there's never, that's never going to be me. And so I started changing my, um, my mindset. And I started saying, I have money in the bank. I am getting a car. I am getting a house. I didn't say I will. I didn't say I can. I said, I am getting these things. And we started car shopping before, uh, you know, we didn't have the money to buy a car yet, but we started car shopping and, and just looking around and I started printing off things and taking these things. I'm like, this is the car I'm getting. I'm getting this car. And, um, you know, before long, I think it was about three months, we got our car. And um, by the end of 2017, we got a brand new house. And uh, it's like, it's 2,500 square feet. So it's uh, probably about, I think, four of the trailers that we were living in. And I just never imagined that I would have this, but I changed my mindset. I worked really, really hard and I started getting these things, um, from that. Uh, and we hit six figures in January, 2018. And, that is mind blowing. I'm still, still adjusting to this day of the lifestyle and the change that we had. Uh, so it's been an incredible journey. And the only thing that I changed was my mindset. Um, I really, I took to heart everything Jenna told me to do. If she told me to read a book, I read it that night, that day, whenever she told me to read it, I read it. She told me to watch a movie, I watched that movie. <laughs> um, you know, and I started accepting all these things and changing my mindset and it's been a beautiful adventure thank you for hearing that i love hearing your story it's literally anytime i'm in a business meeting you're the go-to story because it just proves that if you can do it like literally anybody can do it but i also like the way that you're saying your story you know um this is where we were but i never accepted that that's where we were in your mind, it was, this is where I am going because I have already decided that this is, this is it for me. And I remember early on, you know, um, you're, 
you know, and, and what I loved about working with you, Megan, is that um, you didn't really question anything. It was like, okay, do this, step one. And you went and did step one, step two, and then you did step two. And step three maybe was like crazier, and you're like, okay, I'll do step three. <laughs> but it worked out, right? Um, and in turn, you've been able to go in and inspire with your story, which is why it's so powerful. And you've been able to relate with so many people that have been in similar situations. So thank you for sharing that. And then also, let's bring up Amy. Because Amy, we would all love to meet you. Miss 50K hasn't been here that long. And is just crushing it. So please tell us your story, your background a little bit. And kind of how you got involved in this industry. And why you're here with us thank today. You. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. So nice to... Um, have the opportunity to share my story and I as I was listening to you guys I, it kind of dawned on me like the one thing that I think we all have in common is we've turned our struggles into strengths <laughs> so I kind of want to like you said 50k affiliate affiliate team because I, I I have to say team because you guys this is not something that can be done alone and I am just so proud and just like in awe that I'm, I'm finally aligning with like my people. They always say, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. It's, it's the cliche saying, but it's so, so true. So I want to talk in mindset and commitment because yes, I um, am only seven months into this business and well on my way to a hundred K in August, I'm claiming it, but it really began three and a half years ago. Um, when I first kind of stepped foot into this industry, I always say everything happens for a reason. Again, cliche saying, but it's so true. I had no intention. I kind of stumbled into network marketing. I saw a product that I wanted to try like we all do. And I was told, Hey, you know, for this much more, you can get all these other goodies, all these other products for so much cheaper. And I was all, yeah, cool. I'm like a sucker for free. And so, um, I, I did it. You know, I said, I said, yeah, you know, I could do that. I can do whatever it takes to get the free product. As long as I'm not out anything, then what do I have to lose? And that's kind of how I always am in life. I just, I'm like, what have I got to lose? You know, I tend to be an overanalyzer, but I don't overthink things like too much. Like I kind of just take action. And so I did, I jumped in and let me tell you too, like you said, Jenna, I, this was, this was during like my corporate life. You know, I found my dream job. I went, I was one of the few people who actually knew what I wanted to do when I went into college. I knew that I wanted to go into design and I got the jobs. I always said, like when I went to an interview, I just, if I wanted the job in, in my head, I got it. You know, like I was just that confident that it was going to happen. And, and so, uh, um, I had this dream job girl at the time and I was pregnant with our second baby. I couldn't believe how expensive, um, daycare daycare was. So I was kind of freaking out about, you know, having a second. And so anyways, the extra income income earners of the company. And I'm like, okay, if this mom is making five figures a month, like I got to know how she's doing it. So I was a self-starter, you know, I didn't have someone holding my hand. Um, I, during my job, I would listen to the recordings. I would do the things I would, if I heard a top leader, I would go find out who they were and follow them. And so I'm, what I'm getting at is that I just, I, I did the things that the people who were successful were doing and I took inspiration from that and um, I obsession and it kind of consumed me. And so um, I made the dream board. I wrote the goals. I was saying the affirmations. I was praying and I was just doing the things, you know, that we're all told, but I couldn't understand why I wasn't getting anywhere. It was like two steps forward, three steps back. And I started, you know, questioning it like, okay, is this what I meant to do? But I knew that I had a bigger purpose because I also thought about this corporate job after maternity leave, you know, and my heart wasn't in it as much. I wanted to be back at home. I kind of got that taste on maternity leave, how awesome it is. And then I lost my job in corporate. We're never safe. And so it was either, it was like, you know, how, you know, new CEO, new 
got bought out. It was either move to Chicago and leave Colorado, which is what feeds my soul, like my husband and family. And like, that is what we love is being adventurous and embracing this life. And that is what kept me going too, is just, we do life well together, you know, like let's do, let's see if we can build something where we can work on our free time, like make, have that freedom. And so I could have used that job loss as like, oh my gosh, my whole world's crumbling. I have to find another job or we have to consider moving. But I was like, no, it was almost like a burden was lifted off of me because I didn't have to make that decision. It was made for me because I know so many times we, we get stuck in this safety and this conformity. And I had a good salary, you know, like my husband had a job. I had a really, I was the breadwinner, but I knew that there was something more. I was like, there's got to be more. I'm not just going to be a designer for until I'm 60, like, you know? And so anyways, I took the leap of faith and I went all in. I t I said, this is my chance. And I, and it, and it still, the checks were not going up and my severance and bonus money was going down. We were dipping into our savings and I just, I tried to keep a positive face. I kept showing up even though I was discouraged and worried. And I just kept saying, you know, it's going to happen. Like God's never let me down. If he leads you to it, he's going to lead you through it. And I just kept that mindset and um, just kept showing up. And then all of a sudden, it's just like things started aligning. I got, got in a car accident. My massage therapist used CBD salve on me. I was stressed and worried. And I knew that I, that I kept seeing more and more like, okay, I knew what, like you said, marijuana is. I live in Colorado. There's dispensaries. You know, I've always been an advocate for, for cannabis. But I wanted to know what, how CBD was so different. And I started learning. And I, again, I just wanted to use the product. And, you know, for $20, we can share it with our friends. And I knew my family in other states needed to be using this. My mother, you know, um, had some, some life-altering situations. And, and I knew that I wanted this to protect her body. And so I said, you know what? I was still with the other company. I said, I'm just going to kind of start putting it out there secretly, see if anyone bites on this. And the, the response was overwhelming, you guys. It was like, people were reaching out to me. People were wanting to be in my group. And in this other company, I felt, I felt like almost like people were like, no, get away from me. And in this, it was so refreshing. And when in the first month, I saw more people entering into this, more people wanting to try the product, more volume, more money in my first month than the past three years in that company, I was like, okay, that was that chapter. This is new. And my husband says it perfectly. He's like, it was just a three-year internship. Like, and I look back on it all and I'm like, it had to be that way. Like, and so I just want people to know, like, there's going to be hard times in this industry where you feel like you're doing all the things, like I'm doing all the things. Why am I not where these people are? And it wasn't my time. It, I needed to grow more. I needed to go through the failures and the hard times and the good times so that now I know I've been through it and I'm, and it was just preparing me for this time in my life and where I'm at now. And, um, it just goes to show like when you, when you do it and do it and do it and do it, it's like, it's the compound effect you guys. And, and it adds up and it all is for this moment. And so if you just get your mind right and you just, you take out the how and you focus on your why, it's going to happen. And, um, you know, you're going to question it. You might question it, but just decide, show up daily and, um, and try not to compare yourself because everyone's journey is different. You have to trust that and um, use, use it more as inspiration and motivation and just trust the timing. So yeah, we're well on our way to 50 by convention. So it's exciting. And I'm just excited to see all the people who are coming in and taking advantage. Like this is a special time and we have our hands on something so special and I know the power of momentum. And so now it's just like go time and excitement and bringing everyone in together so that they can get there faster than I did. Thank you so much for sharing. I love your story. And I love that you say that you're, that you said that it's all in your timing, you know, and that you're not going to not have struggles in this journey. Network marketing is not like, okay, I am in my job now and tomorrow I'm going to be a full-time entrepreneur and replace my income 
because I just decided in the first week that that's going to happen and there'll be no struggles <laughs> and it'll be smooth sailing. That is totally the opposite of entrepreneurship. It is hard to be an entrepreneur sometimes because you don't have somebody else writing your checks. You're writing your own check now. And that can either be amazing or it can be scary or a little bit. Um, and for me, in MDC, my experience as an affiliate too was kind of like, it wasn't all rainbow and sunshine the whole time. I remember our very first meeting in Washington, we had 14 people show up. And um, I thought then like, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> like, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a challenge to see how many people we can get on board with this vision. Um, and now fast forward to convention this year, we're expecting about 2000 people. So, I mean, it's all in good timing. If you set your intentions, if you set your goals out there, and if you stay true to your plan, which is what we're going to be talking about next week. But um, let's go ahead and switch gears a little bit and talk about intentions and goals. Because, you know, anytime you're even in school, like they tell you, write down your goals, you know, always have it at the forefront of your mind. And what happens, we grow up and we kind of forget or we do something worse and we confuse the difference between an end goal and a means goal, okay? And I'm gonna explain what the difference between the two of those is. Most people in society, I would say, get stuck in the means goal, which is you're in the middle of your goal. So getting the job is not really the goal. Retiring is the goal, right? So having that lump sum of, of money is the goal because then you can invest and then you can live your life and then you're in control, right? And most people think, well, I'm gonna be a lawyer and then they go to school and they do all the stuff and then they go, I'm a lawyer, I'm done growing and I'm here, I'm in my career and that's it. And then where do you go from there? You just wait and you're buying time until you get there. If your end goal is retirement and you're not picky on how to get there, on how to get this, this money basically, um, then your, your focus starts to change a little bit and your, your motivation starts to change a little bit. Because now it's not like, well, I got 50 years in this career, so I might as well just sit back, be patient, put my time in. Now it's, no, I got to hustle because I'm going to get this, I'm going to build my business now, and then I'm going to enjoy the fruits of my labor later. So let's talk about setting intentions. Um, because like Megan said, and we can bring Megan up again, um, you, when you were in the beginning process, you had to change your mindset. So with that, you had to set your intentions and it was in present tense. It was, I am going to be doing these things. How did you start to change your mindset so that your intentions didn't feel fake? Because I know for me back then making a thousand dollars a week was like above my pay grade. You know what I'm saying? Like in the military, you don't make that much money. I was a E4 specialist. Um, and you know, making a thousand dollars a week was, was my, my goal then. How do you set your intentions uh, and your goals, I should say, when it's above and beyond what you currently believe? I'm gonna ask Megan and then I'm gonna ask Amy. Um, I really just kind of had to adjust my mindset. I knew that if I, I had always, I had, I really had to like take a step back and look at it. I knew that I always had the mindset of I'm going to be a statistic. I'm going to be poor. I'm going to always be working a nine to five. Um, so I always had that mindset and I, and I saw it. That's what I lived. And so I just knew, okay, let me change this real quick. Let me change the way I'm thinking about things. Let me just try and uh, say these things out loud. Let me tell my husband, let me tell my kids, let me start telling everybody that, you know, hey, we're getting a car. Hey, I'm getting this car. Um, so I just started saying the things and making affirmations. Um, I wrote them down. I kept them everywhere. Uh, I probably seemed a little, you know, off at first because I went from, I was like, okay, I'm going from nothing, but I'm going to have this Lexus. I am going to have it. And so that's kind of what, I mean, that's how I changed. I started putting it out there, putting it out to everyone that this is, this is the way my life is going to go. Right. So seeing is not believing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, because people get caught up in this illusion well, yeah. I'm living in a two bedroom apartment. So that's what I see. So that's what I'm conceptualizing. So that is my reality. Your perception is your reality. So if you change your perception, 
Like if you walk through your hallway and you imagine Taj Mahal and you imagine gold doors, you imagine all this stuff. If, if you can be in that center of yourself where you are believing your, your future outcome, you're believing where you're going to be more than where you are right now. I remember getting in the car, sitting in my Ford Fusion. That was the only thing I had left in my name after my bankruptcy, which I filed for in 2015. So a year after becoming a full-time entrepreneur, um, that just goes to show you, yeah, I was making money in MVC. I wasn't making enough because I still had all this other baggage from years before that, you know? So I remember sitting in my Ford Fusion thinking one day, this is gonna be a Lexus, okay? Because this is not, so I'm gonna treat my Ford Fusion like it is a Lexus right now. When I drive to work, when I drive to Starbucks, when I drive anywhere, I'm gonna have this deep appreciation, this deep connection to the things around me that I want to change. And the more that you give into, uh, to that appreciation, that gratitude, the more you give into the universe is what returns back to you anyway. So, I see the comments are coming in. Moni B says, I will have a Lexus. You might, you too, if you, if you come to the convention, we're giving one away. But um, anyway, but yeah, so setting your intentions is also setting your, your internal belief, your thermostat, your internal belief thermostat, I'll say, your, your adjustments with your own self. Because if you can't set your own settings to believe where you're heading, nobody else is going to believe you either. If you're going around saying, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to drive a Lexus. I'm going to do this. Eventually, yeah, they're going to look at you and think you're kind of crazy. But you have to be undeniable, undeniably sure of yourself and unapologetically sure of yourself that I don't need your beliefs to continue on my path. I don't need your, uh, your acceptance because I've already decided this is where I'm going. I set my intentions. Regardless of what you think about me, this is what I'm going to do. And, I, and when we started HempWorks, I, I was literally like a couple lines with a couple people. I said, this is what I'm doing. Are you in or not? Because I was so sure that this was going to blow up because I knew my own personal results, the passion that I had for the products. Uh, I could give this away for free in exchange for some testimonies. And I knew that would just light the fire and light the way. So you have to sell yourself first. In your own goals you have to sell yourself in your intentions. so Amy now I want to hear from you what is your take on all of this and and what we, what did you do in your own life like in your early business to kind of shape the way your your goals are kind of unfolding now so I remember once when someone told me and I've always been a big journaler and I think that I think that there's something to be said for for journaling it helps you just um, it helps you understand yourself and be self-aware and things like that. But someone said, you know, journal as, as where you are five years from now, like, like write down what it, what it looks like, where you are, everything. And just write as if it, you're sitting in that setting five years from now. And so I remember doing stuff like that and um, I'm always a list maker. So, you know, I, I think people don't know how to dream, like really understand how to dream and how to dream bigger and how to manifest. And one of the first intro things that I did is I watched The Secret on Netflix. And, you know, some of that, like, it, it sounds all woo-woo and whatnot, but there's really something to be said for it. And when I started thinking back on some of the things that I actually did manifest, I was like, I didn't even realize I did. Like, for instance, where we're living now, when we were house hunting, we would always drive up this road and we were like, oh, it'd be so cool to live up this road, like in the mountains, whatever. And we would just go around, we would just, every time we would drive, we would end up back here. And when we finally were ready, had the money to buy a house, one popped up in this area and we're living here. And it's just, it's little things like that, that if you think about it enough, if you see it enough, if you write it down enough, I mean, my screensaver, it's 5K a day, you know, like, just stuff like that that you have to see daily to kind of like you you subconsciously create the life that you want and so there really is something to be said about writing it down being super specific smelling it tasting it seeing it like um you talk about dream boards and like a physical dream board i ripped this off before we started because it says we are stay-at-home parents and i made this dream board like three years ago and finally just last month, my husband was able to quit a job that he hated 
He hated this job for five years. He was a hard ass worker, you guys, and he just wasn't he wasn't being, you know, appreciated for it. And we finally are able to sustain both of our incomes. And sometimes you have to be willing to give up the good to go for the great, because I can't tell you like how much more we are able to dream now and um, the things that we're going to be able to do because of sticking with it and finding the right business. And then just taking action. You guys, you've got to take ownership of this and just crush it because, um, yeah, I want to talk about like when you talk about money, making, putting your money to work for you instead of working for your money. Like there's something to be said for being an entrepreneur. If you have that determination and if you are a self-starter and a hard worker, this will work for you. So yeah, definitely. And we have got about 10 minutes left. So we are going to kind of wrap up some of these topics, but you guys, the way you know, this whole theme is escape your matrix. Okay. The, the way, and when I say your matrix, I don't, I'm not really talking about the movie, the matrix. Okay. I'm not saying that I'm saying that everybody has their own limitations. Everybody has their own matrix, so to speak, their own barriers, their own kind of, you know, preconceived ideas about how the world is and the way it works. And the way we're set up currently in today's society is don't dream, settle, you know, and that's what we are taught. You know, my son, he's like, I, I'm learning. He's learning all these like tricks, card tricks. And he's like, I'm going to be a magician. Most parents would be like, you're not. You're going to go to college and get a real job because nobody makes money with cards. Um, but I'm like, yeah, do whatever you want. Like whatever your heart desires. And I think we need more of that where we can feel safe in our own safe place where we're allowed to believe what we want to believe, where we're allowed to achieve what we want to achieve and we don't have to have the barriers and the limitations and, and the lid on us that was placed on us from our parents and from our environment and from our, our educators and our jobs and, and everything else that is meant to keep us down. Network marketing is kind of the vehicle where you can lift that lid off and literally create whatever you want to create. So with that, I want to just mention what is money and your relationship with money? Because now that we have our intentions, we have our goals, you have to change your internal dialogue that you're having, the story that you're having with yourself on a daily basis. What are your subconscious thoughts spewing into your mindset? Are you running around swiping your, your card at Target and praying it doesn't decline? Because if you're emitting that energy, that's what you're attracting. If you're emitting the energy of lack or scarcity, or I didn't hit my rank I wanted to last month, I was this short, or whatever, you, you have to flip it so that you're always thinking, look how close I was and look at where I'm gonna get next month. And you know, my hardest thing for me was to release, to just to let go, to surrender basically to the universe. And if I go broke, if I lose everything, I'm still gonna be okay. I had to kind of let go of the outcome because you know how hard it is to sell somebody a product when you have no money in your pocket and you're like, trust me, you can be a millionaire. You know, you can do this. You feel kind of like a fraud. And so until you figure out that internal dialogue with yourself about, yeah, I'm confident and I'm going here and I'm doing things and I'm making stuff happen and this is how I'm going to do it. Um, until you change that in inside relationship with money, and what you're attracting into your consciousness, um, nothing changes until you change. So I know you guys have a few things you can say on this topic. So Megan, do you wanna share a couple words with maybe yourself even, uh, how did you change the relationship you had with money and, and lack? Yeah, I used to pretty much hate money. And I know that's crazy when you don't have it to hate it, but I knew as soon as it came in, it was going right back out to something else. So I like just despised the day that when we were starting, when we got our money, because I knew it was going right back out. I was never going to be able to save it. I never was going to be able to invest it. Now I look at money as, um, you know, a whole different ball game. Um, I always, I look at money, like if I have a hundred dollars, I'm looking, okay, now how can I make this hundred dollars into a thousand dollars? Um, so I don't look at it as bad anymore. I used to always go to the store and I would have my calculator out counting as I put the groceries in the car counting to make sure that I wasn't going over. Um, and I just started with 
this is what I'm, I'm going to get this. I don't care. You know? Um, so I definitely just changed the way I thought about it. I didn't hate it anymore. Now I look at how can I save it? How can I invest it? That's a very, very valid point for sure. And I remember being in that same situation too, just like, I hope that I can pay my bills this month into, but that is not creating that is you're in survival. And that is the like level one of being on being a human is to get out of survival mode, like as soon as possible, where your money doesn't control you anymore. And now you can manipulate the money in your life to create the things that you really want. So that is a great answer. Thank you for sharing that. Amy, would you like to say a couple words on that? And then we're going to wrap this up with our vision board. Yeah, I think that, um, you kind of have to also just kind of evaluate like your past and where you come from. I know, um, like my, my father was always giving money out freely loans and, and big tips. And so I was like, no, I need to save all this money. He's giving all our money away. I need to save it. And then, um, when I started doing the more, more self-development and listening to people like Tony Robbins or even just these influencers now, young organic influencers who are saying money's playful it's flowing in it's flowing out you know it's got it it's all um it's just energy and i kind of started flipping my mindset not being so scared about it and so i think that you do have to feed your mind and retrain it like you said you grow up just thinking this this is how it is and um and I think that there's just a lot to be said for training and feeding your mind and reading the books and and having a different perspective like you said flipping it yeah, and money is energy, and that's what it comes down to. I'm a big tipper. I give my money away like stupid. Uh, I take care of my whole family. I don't I don't care because I know as soon as it comes in, if I give it out, it's coming right back. Yep. You have it's, to think like that. It's literally just living in the middle of just trusting that everything's going to work all the time and just releasing your little inner control freak and just saying, it's all going to be good. It's all going to work out no matter what, because I set that intention. I set that goal. And all I have to do is walk through the doors that open and, and, and it all works out. So last, I'm going to wrap this up. We've got six minutes left and we're calling it uh, a wrap, but let's talk about vision boards. Uh, and maybe not, a, if you don't want a physical board, fine, but you want to have daily reminders. You want to start practicing auto suggestion. Okay. Um, this is a practice that was documented by Napoleon Hill and thinking grow rich and also the science of getting rich. Um, there's an entire chapter of auto suggestion. What that means is you've been programmed by your TV, by your internet, by your news, by your media, by your teachers, by everything. So all of this stuff is feeding your subconscious on what to think and what to believe and what to feel. Okay. So auto suggestion is basically blocking all of that out and now setting your own setting, okay? So we're all on default when we're born, right? We all have a default setting. You have to turn the default setting off, turn it to manual, and now start writing down the things that you wanna change in your life, the things that are going to now begin to evolve, the things that you are going to think and feel when it comes to money, energy, your uh, new network marketing business, or how to get to the next level. So for me, what helped me was putting together a vision board, just like The Secret said, okay? on Netflix, um, you know, cutting out magazines that really relate to you, things that get you to feel because your thoughts create things when they are backed by that emotional uh, fire, okay? Because your emotions, your feelings is what fuels uh, the creation, the manifestation process. So anything you guys want to share before we wrap this up in regard to vision boards or maybe what you did uh, uh, to keep them at the forefront of your mind? Yeah, I don't always, um, so I don't have like a actual cardboard vision board, but I have it everywhere that I see it. So I live on my phone. So on my screensaver and on my lock screen, I have um, someone else's bank accounts that they get paid. Uh, that inspires me. I have, um, you know, I always keep a hundred dollar bill in my wallet. So I know every time I go to pay that I see that, that I know that's coming into me. Every time I put it out, that's still coming back to me. Um, and I just have different things all over the house. Uh, I have printouts of different private schools all on our refrigerator. Cause that's my next goal is private school. So it doesn't have to really be a board per se, but just little reminders all over your house or all over your office or car so that you can remember what you're working for. Yes, definitely. Amy, anything? I, 
I want to I want to suggest that people set um, all sorts of goals and dreams, small attainable things that can happen, you know, that are pretty easy to, to attain because you want to celebrate your wins too, you guys. You don't just want to have everything be a huge goal and a huge dream and then and then you're like, oh, none of this is happening. So please just remember to also like celebrate small wins too because it's all leading up to something greater and um, pay attention to what you're telling yourself because we tell ourselves a lot of things in our heads and what what you hear like you said is what comes true so if you're always saying like oh it's a crappy month or i'm not getting anyone or this or that well then that's what you're going to keep breeding but if you if you continue to speak light into yourself and um and just always always just flip it and think positive and just be optimistic um and surround yourself with people like that too, because I know that you can get stuck with around some really negative energies and people and, and that feeds you. So just be aware and be and know when to set boundaries and just always focus on, um, you know, being the best version of yourself and knowing that you're worth more. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. You guys, I appreciate you so much for hopping on with me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you guys on next week with Josh Zwegel. He's going to teach us how to set up your blueprint for success. Okay, this is a chess master, basically. Okay, that's not his actual rank. Chess expert, I should say. Um, you guys, he was a, a world-class chess player by age 16. Uh, he's going to teach us how to plan, how to have that end game in mind, how to work backwards. You want to make five grand a month? Okay, what do we have to do to actually put that into place? How many people do we have to recruit? How, how big does your team have to be in order to re reach those goals? So we're going to get into that next week. Again, thank you guys for hopping on. Feel free to share this. I'm going to leave this up in the group. The recording will be available for the duration of this um, class, and we will see you guys on our next video. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.